Hi there, Simon from SimonWoods.com. Uh, three um, wines in front of me. Um, one of them is, um, well, I think Corsica used to belong to Italy, did it? I can't remember. I'm sure they, 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 they probably had a few scraps over it. Uh, all I know is it's closer to Tuscany uh, than it is to Provence, which uh, Corsica often gets lumped in with Provence in wine books. But uh, uh, to be honest, um, well, the reason I've got it in here is because um, the, the, the grape that this first one is made, I'd better tell you what it is, have a uh, Terra Nostra uh, Nieluccio. Uh, uh, Van der Kors and uh, 2011, or just Kors it says here, is it not Van der Kors anymore? Anyway, um, but uh, Neil Lucio, uh, not the most famous of grapes under that name, but um, it's also known as Sangiovese. So dig in, that's why I've got it with the two Italians. And there's a bruised cherry sourness about this. Uh, it smells like it's going to be uh, fresh and perky and, yeah, more in common with um, uh, Italian wines than, um, uh, than, than some, certainly uh, with a, a lot of uh, southern French reds. Um, and uh, it smells like it's going to have, uh, be one of those food-friendly ones. Uh, quite low in alcohol, I think it's a 12%. Yeah, 12%. Um, so let's see whether it is a refreshing summer red wine. And some people might describe that as being a little bit uh, tart and apple-y. Other people would say, oh, it's, um, it's quite um, uh, refreshing and juicy. It's got the cherry character, as I say, this touch of apple. Um, and, um, and there's an earthiness about it. That, that, that's the thing that makes me think of it as more, uh, more Italian than, than, than French. And uh, it's one of those that by itself, people, yeah, you will get people going... But because it's got tannin and acidity, but I think uh, uh, plonk it with something uh, vaguely tomatoey, and it will suddenly come out to play and go, hello, I'm attractive, and you'll find yourself drinking rather more of it than you expected. Let's see whether we can say the same about uh, the next one. Actually, the next two, both from Tuscany, uh, Sangiovese is the main grape um, for both of them. I think it's the exclusive grape of, um, of, of this uh, second one. So this is Poggio del Sasso, Sangiovese, Toscana, uh, made by the Cantina di Montalcino. And I'm not sure why this is uh, Toscana rather than uh, uh, Rosso di Montalcino. Uh, it may be that they want to... Uh, keep maintain Brunello at the top, Rosso di Montalcino and this uh, at a uh, lower level. Is it low level wine? Only one way to find out. Well again I'm getting this earthy cherry character. It feels like it's uh, with a bit more substance behind it. Um, maybe a, a little bit of uh, plum skin, even rose hip there. This was 12%, this is 13 half so I'm expecting a bit more concentration. Um, maybe if it, it's, it's, it doesn't smell, I, I, I don't get too much of that um, uh, warm uh, heartiness that uh, that I want in, in wines from this area but um, it's not the most expensive of wines but uh, so have I any right to expect it but anyway I better better try it first it's okay um, it's got those cherries it's got the uh, slight cherry kernel as well that slight almond nuttiness um, but maybe not enough of the um, of, of the hearty flesh that I want to uh, um, and it's strange, I almost want something halfway between the two. This, this has got a bit more uh, body thanks to the alcohol and certainly a bit more fruit sweetness. Uh, this has got the fresher cherry bite. So maybe I'll try blending the two later, but uh, off camera. Uh, let's see whether I uh, come up trumps with the final one, which is Vignetti Trebio, 2010. Um, and um, I think this is Sangiovese. I'm not sure how much Sangiovese, uh, with uh, some Cabernet, Merlot and Syrah in. Uh, I haven't been able to find out how much of each, but um, it's got lots and lots of information uh, on the back label, but uh, nothing like that. Nearly poured it into the spittoon. Actually, I better pour that out before I uh, pour this one in, and uh, I'll get there. I'll get there. Now I'm not sure how much Cabernet and Merlot they've used here, but um, it really does smell like a, a combination of Tuscany and Bordeaux. Uh, so the Tuscan bit is this um, earthy, spicy, uh, slightly baked cherry uh, character of Sangiovese. The Bordeaux um, thing coming through is a leafy, herbaceous, no, herbal rather than herbaceous uh, uh, richness and more on the blackcurrant plumminess and blackberries. Um, it smells like they're sitting together rather nicely and uh, anyway but let's try and see whether they uh, they taste as if they're making beautiful music well i like that 
dot, dot, dot. Well, the dot, dot, dot. Well, the fir first of all, the good bits. Um, a really nice, gentle extraction. It doesn't feel like they've done, they, they've, they've, they've tried to get as much as possible out of the grapes. Um, and uh, it's, uh, there are no hard tannins there. Uh, there are some chewiness, uh, but um, it's, um, the, the, the fruit suppleness around it is, uh, uh, more than able to cope with that. Um, uh, however, my concern is mainly to do with, um, well, I, I like, I like, I think Cabernet works really nicely in Tuscany. However, plong it in a blend like this, and uh, it, it seems to be, be taking over slightly. Um, so I'm getting this chocolatey, leafy black currant, which I think of as being uh, uh, from the Cabernet rather than maybe from, from the other grapes in there. And it is just tending to be a little bit too loud and pushing the other grapes more into the background. I'll be fascinated to see how it, um, uh, what happens to it over the next few hours, whether the other grapes get a chance more to uh, uh, have their say or whether the Cabernet remains the dominant factor. Um, my favourite of the three wines, uh, but um, yes, one of those wines that has me sort of going, hmm, hmm. So I'm going to go away, do my musing over the next few hours, and uh, I'll report back. See you soon.